Welcome to a series of videos from the Guards Museum. We'll be exploring the history of not one but five regiments of foot guards and delving into our rich collection which stretches back 380 years. This video is being made at an exceptional time, with our fantastic NHS fighting at the forefront of the battle against the coronavirus. Our armed forces are supporting healthcare across the country, with the Scots Guards for example building a new hospital ward on the Isle of Wight. The NHS has built new emergency hospitals and fittingly named them after Florence Nightingale, revered as the founder of modern nursing. She and fellow nurse Mary Seacole are inextricably associated with the Crimean War and their groundbreaking care for the injured soldiers there. In this video we'll be looking at these intrepid women who pioneered the nursing of sick and wounded soldiers which included men from the three regiments of foot guards. Both also have a connection to the Guards Museum and we'll look at this later in, on in the video. The Crimean War was fought between 1853 and 1856 with all the modern weaponry of the industrialised age, but with tactics from the Napoleonic era. Pitch battles were brutal and siege warfare around Sebastopol pounded both sides with artillery of incredible size. The rifled muskets in use were more accurate than in previous wars and the new mini balls, seen here on the right, caused horrific wounds. This surgeon's kit in our collection was used in the war by Francis Cornelius Huthwaite, surgeon to the Grenadier Guards. You can see how prominent the cutting instruments are. When faced with a shattered limb and severe blood loss, the best a surgeon could do was to amputate and cauterise the wound. The only anaesthetic likely to be available was alcohol. As well as the wounded from battle, poor living conditions and disorganised food and water supply led to widespread sickness. Cholera and dysentery were rife. In fact, Surgeon Huthwaite himself died from it in 1854. These wounded and sick men were fed into a military hospital system in the Crimea and Turkey that was poorly equipped and badly organised. It was also a feature of the time that medical science simply did not know how to treat common diseases and infections or how they were caused. Germs had not been discovered and antibiotics did not yet exist. The hospitals were a breeding ground and more men were dying of disease than their wounds. War reporter William Howard Russell wrote in one of his dispatches, the commonest accessories of a hospital are wanting. The stench is appalling. For all I can observe, these men die without the least effort being made to save them. The sick appear to be tended by the sick and the dying by the dying. This and other reports caused an uproar in England and the two women from very different worlds resolved to do something. Florence Nightingale was outwardly a typical Victorian middle class woman, well educated and travelled with religious conviction. But she was also independently minded with an interest in maths and no plans to marry. She persuaded her family to support her career in nursing and was well placed to ask her friend the Secretary of War, Sidney Herbert, to send her and her nurses to Turkey. Mary Seacole was born in the colony of Jamaica with a Scottish soldier father and Jamaican mother. Her mother ran a boarding house for invalid soldiers and her skill for nursing grew from this. Like Nightingale she was determined to rise beyond the constraints of society's expectations. At her own expense she travelled to England to offer her services in the war and when rejected decided to make her own way to the Crimea. Florence Nightingale's formal nurse training led her to concentrate on organising the hospital at Scutari and looking after the basics. She ensured the men were fed properly and that the wards were kept clean. However, there was little they could do to treat them and cleanliness was no defence against disease. Nonetheless, the care she and her nurses provided made a great difference. The image of her touring the wards at night with a lamp was a tender one and has endured. However, we at the Guards Museum know she also carried this. It's known as the Poe Eliza, a little chamber pot understood to be from a doll's house. She would use this to give a tot of alcohol to restless patients, either to soothe their pain, or if they weren't expected to make it through the night, to ease their last few hours on earth. This simple object has such an amazing history, and because she gave it to a Scots Fusilier Guards officer, we're proud to have it in our collection. Mary Seacole headed to the British base in the Crimea at Balaclava. She set up the British Hotel, a camp where wounded and sick could be cared for, as well as buy necessities for their well-being. 
Being closer to the fighting, she directly assisted with the wounded and organised ambulances to help move them. Her experience treating fever in Jamaica was no doubt useful too. Both women were celebrated at the time, but while Nightingale went on to be a national treasure and known as the mother of modern nursing, Seacole slipped into obscurity after her death. But this changed when a campaign was launched in 2009 to raise funds for a statue of her. Lord Clive Soley held an event at the Gars Museum as a fundraiser and to select the artist for the statue. Actress Cleo Silvestra attended in the role of Mary Seacole. This was not the first time that the Gars had fated Mary. Soon after their return home from the war, the officers held a dinner with her as a guest of honour to thank her for the care she'd shown the regiments wounded in the war. The statue was unveiled at St Thomas's Hospital London in 2016. If you've enjoyed this video please give us a thumbs up and do subscribe to our channel where we'll be exploring more of history and also delving into our collection in further videos. Thank you very much.